Well, hello everyone. Uh, good to see you this morning and so great that we can worship our God together. Um, especially in the midst of some crazy times, it is good to know that God can be our lighthouse, the one that we can focus on and look towards. So please join us as we worship him this morning. So good to know that God is our lighthouse and the one that we can lean on. And we have a new song that's actually quite an old song that some of you might know, but we haven't done it um, here. But it uh, has been a song that I've been singing in over and over during these times. It's called Lord, I Need You. And I think this is a great prayer to be singing um, when things can be out of our control to know that we can come to God and cry out to Him, and He will be there for us. Lord, I come, I confess, bowing here I find my rest. And without you, I fall apart. 
comes my way And when I cannot stand I'll fall on you Jesus you're my hope and stay So teach my son to rise to you When temptations come my way recognize this morning that we need you. Lord, be our shelter, be our protector, be our refuge this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, I very much love that song, Lord, I Need You. It rebalances us and gives us perspective that we're not meant to pretend that we've got all things together. In fact, it's right and wise for us to rely on God. There's a prayer in the prayer book that says, Creator God, you've made us for yourself, and our hearts are restless until they find their rest in you. Teach us to offer ourselves to your service, that here we may have your peace, and in the world to come may see you face to face. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. It's great to know that God has made us for himself, but also to know that our hearts are indeed restless until we find rest in him. And so we need him to find peace and life. And as we find it, it's going to fuel us on to love and service of others. Lord, we do need you. Well, now I'm going to invite us all. Let's say this psalm together. It's Psalm 96. It'll be on the screen. I sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord and bless his holy name. Proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations and his wonders among the peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. For he is more to be feared than all gods. As for all the gods of the nations, they are mere idols. It is the Lord who made the heavens. Majesty and glory are before him. Beauty and power are in his sanctuary. Render to the Lord, you families of the nations. Render to the Lord glory and might. Render to the Lord the honour due his name. Bring offerings and come into his courts. Lord God, we want to thank you for who you are. Honour you in all things and give you praise. Lord, we want to pray for the parish of South East Bendigo. Lord, we pray that in these difficult times that we would um, continue to to think of opportunities to to learn from your word and support those who are in this journey and to encourage newer believers in our midst. Lord, we pray that we will be a blessing to the communities into which God has planted us. 
and I pray, Lord, that for the different groups in our church, uh, especially for the young adults and teenagers, Lord, Lord, we want to pray for the diocese and pray for the bishop in council meeting that's coming up. Lord, we pray that you would give them wisdom and insight by your spirit and from your word um, to make the right decisions. Lord, we pray for the various missions that are happening. We pray, Lord, for Blokes Barn. And even though it's been difficult for them to meet in the last six months, I pray, Lord, that they'd still be able to connect well um, online and that there'd be growing mateship amongst the men of that group. We pray too, Lord, for Brad and Michelle Jackson as they complete their final home assignment after their return from um, Japan. Lord, just give them um, insight and, and lead them into their next season um, of, of serving you. And Lord, we want to pray for the persecuted church. In particular, Lord, we want to pray for Afghanistan where there are secret believers there. We pray that you would help them to grow in number and unity. We pray, Lord, that you'd comfort isolated Christians and bring them peace in the face of fear and persecution. Lord, we pray for Lebanon. We pray, Lord, for the thousands that have been left homeless or mourning loved ones who are injured and are otherwise impacted by this tragic port explosion that happened last week. Lord, we pray for generosity and aid and help from the international community. We pray that the help would go to where it is needed and that uh, there would be no mishandling of that aid and we pray lord for your intervention in that region that there would be stability and, and also wisdom for the new government that is um, trying to be formed in that country lord we pray for those who are working hard to find a vaccine for the coronavirus we pray too lord that you would help those who are struggling with restriction fatigue i pray lord that we would just continue to rely on you for our sustenance and help us to think and act wisely of others in this difficult time we pray too lord for belarus where there is much there's been much strife after a recent election that appears to have been um rigged lord we pray for justice and for peace and for a way forward in that country we pray too for our local and national government lord we pray for those who uh, are volunteering in our local community and to serve the, the marginalised. Lord, we pray for the Bendigo Winter Night Shelter, especially, Lord, as they prepare for the end of year's program and the toll that that, that takes. And we pray for all levels of government. We pray, Lord, for integrity and wisdom, that, that they would use the resources that we have for the good of all people. And, Lord, we pray for the federal government and we pray for our Prime Minister, Scott Morrison, and also our local member, Lisa, Chest Lisa Chesters, as well as all the members of Federal Parliament. And we pray for those who are struggling with mental health and unsafe home environments, especially during this lockdown. I pray, Lord, that they would be able to access the right services and get the help that they need. And Lord, we pray for those who are sick and in, and in need, particularly for Matthew Wright, Val Casbolt, Robin Bullen, Campbell McCulloch, Judy and George Thomas, Shiri Sinan, Lynn Holt, Lorenzo Santa Lucia, and many others known to us. Lord, we, we do want to just uh, thank you for your goodness and grace. We know that you are the Lord who sustains us. We know that you are the one who is in control. Help us, Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. As we continue the service, we're going to have an announcement today, and it's really just to alert everyone in our church that we're wanting people to offer their phone numbers for other people within their congregation so that we can call each other. It may be an obvious thing, but it hasn't been to us. We've been asking people to call each other, but how can you do it if you don't have each other's phone numbers? A light bulb moment for us uh, and we're trying to make available people's phone numbers now so we can do a better job at supporting each other if you are willing for your phone number to be given out to people within your congregation fill in the email that's attached to the weekly news many of you have already done that but we're wanting to extend that, that offer to people who may not read the weekly news so much and Look, if you don't want to do it, that's perfectly okay. 
you just don't need to do anything. But for those who are willing, subscribe via that weekly news email and we'll distribute those numbers in the next few weeks. And we very much want us all to be keeping in touch with one another. It's so vitally important. What else is vitally important in our Christian life is hearing the word together. As we're about to hear the Bible readings and sermon, let me pray. Heavenly Father, by your Holy Spirit, we pray that you would enable this word that we're about to hear to enliven our hearts with your truth, love and life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The first reading is Ephesians chapter 4, verses 20 to 29. That, however, is not the way of life you learned. When you heard about Christ and were taught in him in accordance with the truth that is in Jesus, you were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which has been corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your minds and to put on the new self, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to your neighbour, for we are all members of one body. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry, and do not give the devil a foothold. Anyone who has been stealing must steal no longer, but must work, doing something useful with their own hands that they may have something to share with those in need. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. The second reading is from Matthew 22, 34 to 40, the greatest commandment. Hearing that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, the Pharisees got together. One of them, an expert in the law, tested him with this question. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbour as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. Good morning, my name is Rob and it's great to be able to share with you from God's Word today. Now this morning, as you were getting ready for church at home, I was wondering if anyone thought to themselves, I hope I hear some encouraging words from God's Word today. Well, guess what? I'm talking about encouragement, and that's because we all need encouraging. Now, two weeks ago, Karen, when she was preaching, she she touched on this topic of encouragement. And to be honest, we hadn't spoken to each other, so we didn't know what each other was saying. But that's fine. That's quite okay, because encouragement is something that we all need, especially while we're living in these difficult and challenging times. So let's pray before we continue. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word, and I pray that you'll speak to each of us today as we look at it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, when I was in Year 7, which is going back quite a few years ago, I made this little pen holder here. And this pen holder... It normally sits on my desk holding pens, but today I've got it here to show you. So I'll put that over here for the moment. And a little while ago, Pete and I, we started making this little bird's house. We, we haven't finished it, but we'll hopefully finish it soon. Now to make the pen holder and the little bird's house, uh, a variety of tools we use. For example, a hammer, a, a, a saw to cut the wood, a square to make sure that we, we cut our corners straight, a tape measure to make sure we had the right lengths of wood, and of course, good old nails. Now, it's much smaller nails than this we use, but I just got a big one so that you can hopefully all see it today. Now, these tools that we used to make these two items, they can also be used in quite a destructive way. For example, this hammer could be used to, you know, smash this little pen holder that I've got. I'm not going to do that, but it could be, couldn't it? Put that back. And and the nails, if 
No, the nails are hammered in the wrong spot or they bend. That can also damage what it is we're making as well. And the saw. The saw could be used to cut either of these items in half, which would totally destroy it. So as you can see, tools, they can be used to build a project, but they can also be used to destroy something. And it's the same with our words. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29, it says, Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. So God's word, it reminds us that we need to use words that are going to build each other up. Yet how many times have we used the hammer of criticism to pound our thoughts onto others? Or have we used a tape measure to see if other people measure up to our expectations? Then there is the level of unrealistic expectations that we impose on others. Or maybe some of, you, some of us have used the sandpaper of negative words to smooth out what you consider to be the rough edges in someone else. Words, when they're used in a destructive way, that can be quite devastating, which can then cause lasting damage to someone else, and that can be very hard to fix. In Ephesians chapter 5, verse 11, we read that we're to encourage and build each other up. And when we look at our dictionary to see what the word encouragement means, it says it's the action of giving someone support, confidence, or hope. Now from that definition, we can see that encouragement, it has the power to strengthen and spur others on. It can motivate and regenerate. It can bring emotional healing and restore hope. And it has the capacity to empower, enrich, energize, edify, elevate, and cause others to excel and exceed. Encouragement, it's powerful, and can it, it can really change the course of another person's day, their week, their month, or even their life. And as you read your Bible, you'll discover that there are many examples of where people exercise the power of encouragement. In 2 Chronicles chapter 30, verse 22, we read how Hezekiah, gave encouragement to all the Levites. And in 2 Chronicles chapter 35, verse 2, we read how Josiah appointed the priests to their duties and encouraged them in their service of the Lord's temple. In Judges chapter 20, verse 22, we read how the men of Israel encouraged one another. And the Apostle Paul, he was another excellent example of someone who encouraged others. In the letters that he wrote, we read how Paul and his companions including Barnabas, and on a little side note, Barnabas's name means encourager. Well, Paul and his companions, they travelled around and they spoke many words of encouragement to the people that they met. And in our recent sermon series from Philippians, we saw how Paul again encouraged the people. He was encouraged by the people from Philippi. And in Romans chapter 15, verse 4, we read how the Bible is written to encourage us. It says, For everything that was written in the past was written to teach us, so that through endurance and the encouragement of the Scriptures, we might have hope. And the best example of encouragement that I want to mention from our Bibles comes from Jesus. And that's because it's through Jesus that we, we, we gain a glimpse of God's love for us. God's love for us is so deep, so sacrificial, that he spared nothing for our sake. In John 3.16, we read that God gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but will have everlasting life. And in John chapter 15, verse 13, we read, What greater love can someone have than to lay down their life for their friends? Jesus, he didn't flee from his tormentors. Rather, he endured suffering and died on a cross for our sake so that we might have life everlasting. God's love is unfathomable, indescribable and so deep that nothing can separate us from God's love. 
And that is encouraging news. So who needs encouragement? Well, the answer is we all need encouragement. It doesn't matter what age you are, where you live or anything else. Everyone needs encouragement. And how often do we need to receive encouragement? You know, is a yearly pat on the back from our boss, is that good enough? Is it okay to, you know, once a month say kind words to our family? No, that is not enough. It turns out that we humans, we're pretty needy. We need food daily, we need sleep daily, and our hearts need to be encouraged daily as well. And Hebrews chapter 3 verse 13 reminds us, as it says, that we're to encourage each other daily. So how often are we to do it? Daily, that's right, daily. So on that note, a question for all of us to think about is, is encouragement a regular part of your conversation and actions? Proverbs chapter 12, verse 18, it says, Reckless words pierce like a sword, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. Now, as far as I know, everyone that attends Strathfield State Community Church and everyone that attends Holy Trinity, we all have a tongue. So that means that we all have the power. And this verse reminds us that we have the power to bring healing. The words that we use, they'll either pierce like a sword or bring healing. And each of us, through our, through our speech, through our actions, we have the power. The power to revive someone, to renew their strength, to refresh their spirit and lift them up when they're having a bad day. That's what the power of encouragement can do. So what are some practical ways in which we can encourage each other while we're in lockdown 2.0? Well, one way is through speaking. And at the moment, we can't do much of that in person. But from what I can gather, we all have phones. And Proverbs chapter 16, verse 24 says, pleasant words bring healing to the bones. So as you ring someone, you can bring healing to them as you empower them and elevate them and energize them. Now, listening is actually another way of encouraging someone else. Now, sometimes we don't have to say anything. And that's because an understanding ear and a willingness to listen is all that's required. Now, writing. Now, the Apostle Paul, he wrote quite a few letters to encourage believers in different places. Now, you don't have to write a letter as long as what Paul did. But instead of just speaking the words, you know, write them down. And that way the person who receives them can reread them over and over again. Now I've got a large envelope over here. Now, this envelope contains encouraged notes, encouragement notes that I've been given over the years. And I call it my warm fuzzies folder. And that's because as I read what's inside it, it makes me feel warm and good inside. And I can read these, notes, these encouraging notes whenever I need to, over and over again. And some of the ones that are in here are received from when I was a teenager. And it's good to pull them out and read them every now and then. Helping is another way. Now maybe you could pick up some milk, a loaf of bread or some fresh groceries for someone who shouldn't be going out to the shops and you could leave it on their front doorstep and help them out that way. And I'm sure that Next year, the Bendigo Winter Night Shelter Program will be running again. And I'm sure they're going to need helpers next year. And you can go along and encourage the guests that come along by being there and helping out. Now, prayer is another way that we can encourage others, and it's something that we can all do. In 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 11, Paul wrote, You help us by your prayers. Praying with someone, even over the phone, can have a powerful impact on someone else's life. Send a text message, make a phone call, send an email, send an emoji with a big smiling face. Pray for someone else. Be creative. There's lots of ways in which we can encourage each other. And as I've said, encouragement is extremely powerful. Because as you encourage someone else, you can really change the course of their day, their week, their month, 
or even their life. Now earlier in our reading from Matthew chapter 22, Jesus spoke about the greatest commandment. And he said the greatest commandment is to love God and then to love our neighbours. And as we encourage other people, we're loving our neighbours. And this is just one way in which we can fulfil what Jesus commanded us to do. Now did you know that God also encourages us and strengthens us through his Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit helps us to remember you know, the message that we heard last Sunday at church at home. The Holy Spirit helps us to remember what we read in our devotion this morning. And the Holy Spirit gives us the words to say so that we can go and encourage other people. The Holy Spirit prompts us through our actions so that we can also encourage each other that way. Encouragement is something that God does. And he does it so that we can know him. And it's an important part of our walk of faith as well. Some other benefits from encouraging others is that encouragement makes it easier to live in a fallen world. Encouragement makes it easier to love as Jesus loved. Encouragement gives us hope. Encouragement helps us through times of discipline and testing. And encouragement nurtures patience and kindness. And encouragement makes it easier to sacrifice our own desires for the advancement of God's kingdom. So it doesn't matter who you are, what you do, what your age is, we all need to encourage each other. And bringing it back to my carpentry uh, tool example at the beginning, we need to make sure that we're using our tools in the best way possible. Not because we're trying to make a you know, perfect pen holder or perfect bird's house. We're doing it because we want to encourage each other and build each other up. So today, each day of this week, each day of this next month, each day of the rest of your life, can I encourage you to ask the Holy Spirit to show you who it is that you can encourage so that you can go and make a difference in their life. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you that you encourage us and that we in turn can encourage others. Help us not to take this task lightly and I pray that through your Holy Spirit that you would reveal to us who it is that you want us to encourage. Help us to step out in faith so that we can build each other up according to their needs. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So as we go out this morning um, into the week ahead, it is good to be reminded that uh, God is good no matter the circumstances around us. He is good and he has good plans for us and we can put our hope in him.
so glad you've been able to join in with us today in prayer, in worship, in hearing God's word. Let me pray God's blessing on you. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. See you later.